Hello, survivors. Welcome back to the garage, the waste's vault of knowledge. You are watching the most in-depth and useful show for every true fan of Crossout. Subscribe now and don't forget to click the bell icon, never to miss another episode full of good stuff straight from the devs. Load your guns, people. We are rolling out. Telling truth from tale can be hard in the wastes. Survivors often talk about the ghost ship they saw during Judgment Day that changed the world forever. It was seen last around the city port, down at Terminal 45. Well, which is to be expected, where else can you find a ship, right? But the ultimate fate of the ship is unknown. Even if the rumors are true, then local must have salvaged the entirety of that ship long ago. Some say, the ghost ship is a secret black project by the military and one day the people of the Wastes will hear more of the ship when the project is complete. The situation has changed drastically when a route to Terminal 45 was discovered by the lunatics. Those crazy seekers of fortune soon flooded the port area. When the head of nomads, Ulysses, found out about the place, he put up a hefty bounty for each container delivered to him from there. But. There was a surprise waiting for everyone. An unknown faction built an impregnable fortress in that terminal. The guests were not welcome and met a veritable hail of lead. But that did little to dissuade the curious. Instead, they believed there must be something valuable inside that forbidden zone. Now the survivors work in teams and conduct regular raids around the terminal. Whatever party controls the place now has to be turned into a labyrinth of containers, cranes, and various port junk. Behind each corner, there are rocket-armed rides and other gun-toting vehicles waiting to ambush the unwary. Terminal 45 is a PvE-type map. You'll be fighting against the mysterious party controlling the place, which is controlled by the AI. Four rides can enter a raid, with the ultimate goal of reaching the precious cargo. There are two major tactical approaches to use here. You can either boldly rush forward or clear out the area in an orderly fashion. In order to use the first approach, you'll need to use faster rides. If you're committed to this way, then only ever engage those that come directly to you, dodge enemy fire and go straight to the finish. Some of your team is bound to make it. Weapons-wise, I suggest shotguns, machine guns and contact mines. But this approach is far from ideal, because much is left to the whims of the fate, actually. The second approach is made with heavier vehicles. Basically, this will be a test of toughness for your craft, your squad's team play, and your will to win. Thanks to cannons and rocket launchers, you can take on enemies easier, even should they appear unexpectedly. In any case, you'll need to work together on this one. Your allies must cover you from enemy fire. Help each other to get back on your wheels or tracks and make sure that at least some of you make it in one piece till the end. Trust me, no matter how good your ride is, it's as good as dead if you try to brave Terminal 45 alone. In this episode of The Garage, we decided to look at the rides that can dish out some serious damage. The mission is simple. Pick a ride count its guns, add the gun's damage output together, and voila, we got the magic number. Some factors are left in between the lines, such as reload time, projectile speed, and such. The word here is damage. The list of user-made craft is getting longer by the minute, and possibly by the time this episode hits the wastes, there will be designs with even higher damage output. Should you find one? Make sure to write its name for us in the comments below, okay? Katyusha Enter the Katyusha there's only the name and the general operational principle left in place from the legendary Soviet rocket artillery. The ride's designer used the trucker cabin and gas generator in order to get a total of 14 points of energy. 
12 points were spent to install two hurricane homing missile launchers. Each fires four long-range homing missiles. Even a single hurricane launcher is a force to be reckoned with and can instantly destroy a lighter aircraft in a single salvo. Eight rockets launched at once can seriously cripple even some of the heaviest rides in the game. Make no mistake, it's a serious weapon, but it requires skill to use right. That's the catch here. A nimble enemy might leap into cover behind a rock or simply the map's terrain to have your missiles fly harmlessly over or around the target. The Katyusha itself is not very agile. Three pairs of twin wheels provide good traction, but the speed is subpar. But there's some room left under the hood for an engine, and the ride itself has two points of energy available for an upgrade. These can be spent to install a powerful engine or such, or a radar to know where your enemies are before they find you first. The ride can also benefit from an ammo crate, but usually the Hurricane's eight salvos is enough for a regular battle. However, you can still put the crate on board if you want to participate in longer firefights. Vortex Vortex Walker is less of a threat at first glance, but it is still a powerful foe to contend with. The heart of the ride is the humpback cabin. The parts made by scavengers are best for dealing maximum damage. Vortex moves painfully slow, but it does not have to come close to the enemy to win. You see, it has Mandrake Artillery Unit on board, which can fire halfway across the map and set the target ablaze with napalm, a considerable threat on its own. But this ride has another trick up its sleeve. A tow missile by the name of Clarinet. At mid-range, it can easily tear off a wheel of a ride and seriously decimate the enemy at close range. But alas, the craft has one serious flaw. That is, a low chance of dealing maximum damage from two weapons to one target. This is virtually impossible to do due to the difference in effective ranges of both weapons and the necessity of manually aiming the tow missile. Vortex is best used against a group of enemies that are already engaged in a fight with your allies. A single good hit with a Mandrake and the missile shortly after is a huge step toward your team victory in that particular battle. Before their mysterious transformation, the nomads were just normal and friendly folks of the wastes. Once they were the link between the old world and the new, trying to act like humans. Back then, they were called simply the traders. Despite their friendly nature, many survivors steered clear away from their long trading caravans. But they had a good reason. The traders always rode powerful rides, armed with deadly weapons. Due to their constant research of the wastes and its numerous anomalous zones, many members of the factions gradually had their appearance changed and wore masks ever since. But the changes were more than simply physical. Their perception of the world changed too. Then the traders became known as nomads, while their leader, Fox A, changed his name to Ulysses. Perhaps the waste changed something else entirely within these people. Who knows what truly goes on in their minds? Whatever the answer, the nomads are still human enough not to be called lost. They venture deep within the abandoned places of the old world in an attempt to find all its lost knowledge. The rides made by the nomads were once akin to heavily armored trucks, but now they resemble retro cars with an added touch of aviation design. They strive for balance of speed and defense. All members of this faction like nothing more than to appear quickly before their foe and riddle the target with rapid-firing weaponry. Any survivor can join the Nomads once his player level is 10 or higher. Their workbenches don't produce regular grade parts, starting straight from rare grade parts and above. Within this category lies their only cabin, the Wyvern. Speed, armor and tonnage values are the golden middle ground with this one which in turn makes it possible to create pretty much any ride from it. 
Even though the nomads prefer rapid-firing weaponry, such as machine guns, miniguns, auto cannons, the speed and armor of their craft allow them to successfully use shotguns made by the lunatics or heavy weapons made by the scavengers. Inside the faction's laboratory, you can craft a very powerful grenade launcher called Recha, a chameleon module and two types of drones, an attack drone and a missile one. Despite that, the faction's standard crafts of nomads rarely use these, well, with only the drones seeing occasional use. Nomad rides look more like racing cars than military transports. The rounded shapes of their aircraft parts, wheels, and the overall look of their cabin only add to the overall racing appearance. Probably the only exception is the Wanderer Standard Craft, which due to its tracks looks like an APC or a minigun armed tank. The ride's maximum weight limit allows you to turn it into a long-range weapons platform, while its speed can be used to turn it into a close-range fighter vehicle. Wyvern generates 10 points of energy, which is enough to power a couple of judges or executioner cannons, while an extra generator can greatly expand the list of possible weapons options. Should you desire, you can install three shotguns and a chameleon module. This ride can make for a nasty surprise for your enemies when appearing behind one. Whatever the qualities the Nomad vehicles have, their stock builds are not that popular. But it's the separate parts of the faction that are used widely, especially those providing a sizable increase in ride structure. These are not heavy-duty armor plates of the scavengers, but they are far more formidable than the weak crafts of the lunatics that fall apart even at the slightest hint of enemy fire. Since you can change the factions as many times as you want, it would be, by the way, unwise not to get all the benefits you can for free. The last and most important part of this show is where we answer your questions from the comments. Will there ever be a lobby for one-on-one -on -one battle mode available? We do not plan to introduce dedicated lobbies in the nearest future, but we're already working on improving our matchmaking system. As to the one-on-one -on -one mode, we also do not plan to make such a mode anytime soon. Will you introduce a driver model to in-game cabins? No, we do not plan to do that, but only because of the game's age rating. Why can't I watch my Leviathan fight? We want to develop this feature that will allow you to record battles not only for your Leviathans, but for regular PvE and PvP battles alike. This will take some time and resources to complete. Oh well, I guess that's it, fellas. The show will return in one week from now, forever ready for new adventures in the post-apocalyptic wastes of Crossout. Don't hesitate to ask all your questions in the comments and do me a favor, will ya? Tell your friends about the show. We can always use some new drivers. Be seeing ya.